Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1502. Hey, in the last couple of videos, we've been trying to pull data from a different sheet based on a row number. But in this video, we want to see how to build a polite user solution. And we're going to see these functions and features in this video. Now, what do I mean by polite user solution? On the source data sheet, our data is going to be in the B column here. I want to indicate over on the sheet where we're going to pull data. I want to indicate that the first possible row is 10 and the last possible row is 20. But if I add new records down below, I want the polite user solution to update and indicate to the user that now if there's data down to 22, that's the last possible number they should enter as a row number. Now if we go over to 1502, let's just start off by using the index function and our row number to look up the piece of data. So we're going to use index. Now the first argument is called array, and those will contain the items we want to look up. And then the second argument is row number. So I click on source data, and our data is going to be in column B. And we're only going to enter data below. So I'm going to highlight the entire column by clicking on B. We can see up in the formula bar, source data. That's the sheet name, explanation point, and then BB. That means the entire column. I click up in the formula bar, comma, to get to row number. And our row number is in B5 on that other sheet. So I type B5, close parentheses, and Enter. And sure enough, it is looking up Tyrone, because Tyrone is in row 14. If I type 19, I get Yolanda. Now the problem arises if I type 22, it's going below and there's nothing there. Now two things. I would like to create a user label so the user can see that I should only be going from row 10 to 20, and I want it to be dynamic. And then I want to use data validation here to prevent anybody from entering numbers like 22. Well, I need the first row and last row from that other sheet. And I'm going to start off by using the row function. It expects a reference. Clicking on source data, I'm going to click in the very first cell. Up in the formula bar, I can see the sheet name, explanation, and B10. Close parentheses. All row will do will say, hey, what row is that reference? 10. And Enter. Now the last row. Since I'm going to enter more data, and I'm not converting that data over there to an Excel table, I'm going to have to look up the last item. Well, I want the relative position, or actually I want the row number, so I'm going to use the match function. Now, because I want the actual row number, when we get to the second argument, lookup array, I'll just highlight the entire B column. Then whatever row will be exactly the correct relative position for our formula down here, since we're looking through the whole column. But here's the problem. Those are text items. How am I going to get match to always find the last text item? Well, match function like VLOOKUP has a fourth argument. And we can do approximate match lookup. And the beautiful thing about approximate match lookup is if the lookup value is bigger than anything in the column, then it will always get the last one. Now, since we're using text values, I need to put some word here that'll be bigger, alphabetically that is, than any of the items in the column. So watch this. I'm going to use the repeat function. Now, the repeat function will allow us to repeat some text. And guess what? I'm going to repeat Z, comma. How many times? Well, really, all I need is like three or five or something, because no word starts with five Zs. But just to make sure, I'm going to put 255. Why 255? Because for lookup functions, that's the max number of characters that it can have in a lookup value. So there it is. That's overkill, but it will work. That's the big word I'm going to put in comma to look up through clicking on source data the entire B column. I can see the sheet reference up there. Now I'm going to close parentheses, Control-Enter to put it in the cell and keep the cell selected, and then immediately hit F2, backspace. Because watch this, match, comma. Just like VLOOKUP, it can do one approximate match or zero exact match. We want approximate match. 
which is the default in VLOOKUP and MATCH. So I am not going to put that in, backspace. Now, again, the reason we're doing approximate match is because if lookup value is bigger than anything, it will always get the last one. And sure enough, it got the last row that has data in the B column. Now, I want to come down here and do data validation to make sure that a user can't enter anything except for numbers between 10 and 20. So I click in the cell, data, over to data validation, click data validation. Now, the default is to allow any value, and we want to allow only whole numbers. And look at that. Between, I have a min and I have a max. Now, I'm going to enter an error alert, something like rows between first and last. And you could put a more comprehensive message here, but I'm just going to paste that. Click OK. Now, what in the world is going on with data validation? That should not be allowed. Well, I had that in the cell before I created data validation. Actually, if you've never used it, you can circle invalid data. And sure enough, that red circle means it shouldn't be there. I can remove the red circles by clearing validation circles. Now I'm going to enter a 20. And there it is. Dim is the last person. Now we'll go test it in just a moment by adding new uh, data below. But let's do one last thing. Let's create a dynamic label up here. So click in the cell equal sign, and I need a text label. In double quotes, I'm going to type row between and double quote. Now you could put whatever you want there. I'm going to join that using Shift-7. That's the join symbol to 10. And then I'm going to join it to double quote space, and there's a space, a double quote, and there's the max value, and Enter. Now we can test everything. Before we go over and add a data, let's, let's test this. I'm going to type 50. And sure enough, there's our data validation being polite. I'm going to say Cancel. Now I'm going to go over to Source Data and add a new name. GG Hin, Enter. Battalion X and Enter. Now if I go over to 1502, sure enough, now I see 10 to 22. And if I enter 14, of course, I get Tyrone. If I enter 22, now I'm getting Battalion X. All right, so that was a little bit about looking up something on another sheet based on a row number. But we helped the user by creating a text formula here. And we went and got the first and last row. And we even added data validation. All right, if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more videos to come from Excel is Fun. We'll see you next video.